plaids. Who doesn't love a good plaid? They go with most decor. They're throughout fashion. They come in so many different colors and styles. You just who doesn't love a plaid? I don't know. Maybe there's somebody out there that doesn't, but hey, I really do. This quilt that we're going to talk about today is a plaid quilt made predominantly from men's shirting fabrics, or at least I believe it's men's shirting fabrics. But first, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. I'm so glad you could join me today, and I can't wait to get started looking closer at this quilt with you. So let's get going. So as we look at this quilt, we're gonna first notice the block. Uh, the block is called a split rail fence block, and it's right here. So it's made up of four units, and it's made up of, each unit has two fabrics. So the unit it's, is right here, and then the maker just turned the units to create this pattern. What's also really interesting about this block is that it makes a secondary block right here. Okay, so when you put these squares together, let me move that up for you. When you put these squares together, you get another block configuration, which if you're playing with color, you can really have some fun with this and make some interesting quilts and some interesting um, configurations with this quilt. So let's talk about the colors for a moment. The color is primarily blue, which is what drew me to this quilt to begin with. But there's a lot of pink accents and, and cream accents, as well as some peach and even some red. And when you look at the quilt as a whole, it balances really nicely because of those fabrics. It's made up of shirting fabrics. Now, I don't know I wish I knew, but I do not know if this maker used old shirts or not, uh, but this maker absolutely used shirting fabrics. So my guess is the maker used old shirts, maybe worn out shirts to make this. Another important thing to note about these plaids, the maker was meticulous about making sure that the plaids were running straight. That's really hard to do. If you've ever worked with plaids, you know how difficult it is, but the effect is so cool. I couldn't find one that was off even a little bit. They are perfect. This quilt is hand uh, quilted and there's a very light thin, thin batting that you can actually see in some of the spots where there's some holes. Uh, the wear on it is significant, unfortunately. Uh, we see it in a lot of different places, but I think I can repair a lot of them, especially because they are shirting fabrics and a trip to the thrift store to get some repair patches would not be a problem. The backing is gray and this maker just pulled the backing around to the front and hand tacked it down. Uh, the corners are not mitered and there is a lot of wear on the binding as well, but of course that's easy to, to put another binding over top of it to preserve this quilt. The last thing I wanna talk to you about is the piecing. These were applique together and I don't quite know why the maker did that. It was a lot more work and I don't know if the maker just didn't know a better way to do it, uh, but it definitely, the piece, it wasn't pieced traditionally, it was pieced in an applique method. Which... So what lessons can we take away from this quilt? What is the maker trying to tell us through this quilt? Boy, I really wish I could talk to the makers of some of these, it would be really cool. Anyway, back on topic here. Uh, the first thing I believe the maker is trying to tell us is to think outside the box with piecing. Do what you're comfortable with. I think I said that last week or maybe two weeks ago too, but you know, it was a way I would never have thought to put this quilt together and it worked. It's done beautifully, you know, so it's not how I would be comfortable with it, but that's, you know, that's the beauty of this art, that you, there are so many different ways to get to the end result. And one way may be considered right, but it doesn't mean it is right. The next thing I think the quilt maker is trying to teach us is that if you're going to have a quilt that's dominantly one color, bring in other colors to complement it, like this quilt. This quilt, if you were to look at it and say, hey, what color is this quilt? You'd say it is blue, but there's a lot of different shades of pinks and reds and creams and all different shades in there that really enhance the blue. They complement it well and they let that blue shine and be the star of the quilt. And lastly, plaids. Now, I've seen some beautiful plaid quilts where the maker really didn't pay attention to the if it were straight or not. And that doesn't mean that it would necessarily make it a 
wrong way to do it. But I can tell you with this quilt, I feel it enhances the quilt design being straight, that the plaids are straight and the stripes are straight. I think it just adds that other element uh, that just makes this quilt special. And you know that the maker, as a maker, I know the maker purposely did that and made sure that those plaids were straight, which is not an easy task. So, you know, you don't always have to use pl straight plaids, especially I've seen some really cool quilts where they use, they play with the directional of the plaids and it gives a really cool effect too. But just know your plaids, know what you want that plaid to say. And that's just an important element to the quilt too. So what do you think? Great quilt, isn't it? It's, it's so, so fun and so cozy and so wonderful. And I'm so glad you could join me and please, you know, subscribe if you haven't done so. Click like on this. It really helps me out a lot. Uh, so in the works coming up, I have a few tutorials that I'm working on. I also have, of course, another old quilt. I'm going to be doing that for a long, long time. Uh, so every week on Tuesdays, you'll see a new old quilt that I'll review. Uh, stay tuned for some more updates and some wonderful things happening. If you haven't done so yet, please, please. Uh, follow me on Sew the Distance on Instagram. I also am working on developing a blog and all kinds of cool stuff coming up. So have a good day. I'll see you next week. Have a good day.